now that we've done most of the work for the simulation of the water particles, now we can start to talk about meshes and how they can be used to turn these individual particles into one solid mass. So let's go ahead and pick up where we left off. And before we start to talk about meshes, I'd like to make just a few more adjustments to these particles. Now picking up from the last lesson, if we take a look at uh, what we just cached, if we play these particles through, you can see that they do splash up pretty nicely. Okay, now if you do decide that this is too much of a splash, uh, we could actually turn down the size of this emitter. So right now we do have quite a bit of water that's flowing in. You can see that we do have quite a few. So what's pretty much happening is the reason that we have this large splash is because of this large amount of water that's displacing these particles and throwing them out. So if we wanted to be able to get around that, we could actually just make this emitter a little bit smaller. So let's say maybe 0.2 and 0.2. So that's a little bit smaller. And then because we made this a little bit smaller, we'll probably need to take this resolution up a little bit more to compensate. Okay, so let's take a look at what that has done. Hopefully we shouldn't see these particles kick out quite so much around this back side. So now if I simulate this through and take a look at what we've got, now we don't have nearly the amount of water that's being thrown out because we have a, a less amount of water that's actually coming in. So a less amount of force means we have fewer particles that are being kicked out. So this might actually be something that's a little bit more manageable. Okay, so now we've pretty much got the particles behaving the way that we want. Now let's start to talk about meshes within RealFlow. So to assign a mesh, let's go ahead and just select the particles. And now we'll go down here to the Meshes tab. And within the meshes, we'll tell it to create a new mesh. Okay, let's go ahead and reset this so that we can watch this. Now, when we play this through, you can see that there is an additional amount of white space around these particles. And if you look real closely, it's actually a polygon mesh. Okay, now, if we wanted to be able to view this in an actual shaded view, what we could do is underneath view, let's go to view, element, and let's change this to a smooth shaded view. So now we can actually see the solid surface that this mesh is making. So if we were to go ahead and play this through, I'm going to go ahead and simulate this real quick. You can actually see how these uh, particles are actually able to affect the way that this mesh looks. So for each frame, RealFlow will actually build a mesh around these particles. So you can see sort of how this mesh has sort of a splashed look to it. There are, though, a lot of options that can control the way that this mesh looks. So if I were to go ahead and go back a few frames, if I take a look at this mesh tab, um, I've got the polygon size, which basically just controls the size of these faces. So let me go ahead and play this through for just a second so we can see this. I'm going to go ahead and turn this back to a wireframe view. And the polygon size pretty much just controls the density of these faces. So if I were to change this to something like 0.1, which should be a really low number. So I should have really big polygon faces. So a very low res polygon mesh is now created. Okay. The other way around, you could actually take this up to a pretty high density for really fine liquid simulations. So if I were to go ahead and reset this and simulate this through. Now we have a really dense polygon mesh. So that's where this polygon size comes into play. And I'm going to go ahead and leave this at about 0 0.005. That'll give me more than enough definition. We also have some more options that could be found underneath this circle option that's found underneath the mesh. This is where we get into things like the blend factor and the blend radius. So the blend factor controls um, how much or the amount of distance there needs to be between each one of these particles to actually generate a mesh. So by default the blend factor is 95, which for most circumstances that's okay 
but you may find that that actually gives you things that look a little bit too thick. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this back to a shaded. So let's go ahead and take a look at what would happen if we were to lower this blend factor to a really low number. Go ahead and play this through. Now you can see when my blend factor is set too low that you pretty much just get an individual mesh around most of these particles. And this can actually be pretty good for something that's a real violently splashing liquid. You could set this blend factor pretty low. And this does become sort of a task to get the, the right mix between something that's not really thick looking, but at the same time that will allow you to actually get nice splashes around this. For this, I'm going to go ahead and use a blend factor of about 80. That seems to give you a pretty good mix. Okay, I'm also going to pretty much leave this blend radius at the way it is. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly simulate this one more time. Okay, now that this has been simulated, now if I scrub through my timeline, you can't see anything is really changing. My mesh is not moving at all. But if I go ahead and take a look at this in a wireframe view, now if I scrub through this, my particles are actually moving. If I select them, if you look really closely, you can see my particles splashing down through this mesh. Okay, for this mesh to actually be able to update while you play it through or while you scrub it, you need to actually turn on this option that's called Build Mesh on Play. Okay, so now when I scrub through, now you can actually see this mesh moving as I scrub through my timeline, which is what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this back to a solid view, smooth shaded. And in the next lesson, which will also be the final lesson of this first little mini project, we'll go ahead and finish up this simulation and then we'll go ahead and take a look at really what this whole simulation will look like once you finally render this.